beautiful and welcome back to my channel and welcome to this video that's going to be this week's new makeup releases going on the wish list or not this is the weekly series on youtube where every sunday i come back and i chat about the new makeup releases sneak peeks and announcements and i let you know whether or not i want to pick them up and then you let me know down in the comments whether or not you want to pick them up it's okay to disagree listen i can love something that you hate and i can hate something that you love or dislike or slightly have a distaste for it's perfectly fine. It's okay to disagree and if you haven't been here before, my name is Angie. Hello, I am a lover of fashion and makeup, especially colorful things. Slightly colorful today, I'm wearing one of my absolute favorite color combos of life, which is pink and red. So I'm really feeling myself today, plus marker nails. How cute are they? These would match my cactus if I gave my cactus a little bit more juice. Sorry, I'll fix that for next week. <laughs> But if you want to see some more videos, do not forget to subscribe because I do upload several videos a week. Now, we're still having a bit of a snow thing in Sweden, so I am bundled up because I am cold. I did film this look. I actually used something that I promised I was going to do. I did my Clem Nebula and the Escape Pod together. I'm going to have this video live. I'm hoping next week. I'm hoping next week. I just did a little fun uh, bright pink and red look together. I'm quickly going to mention though. So I don't forget, we did have a restock of the Club Nebula and it sold out super fast. Like we were, I, I'm gonna be honest, I feel very ill -eaten. Like we were not prepared. There were several thousands of you on the site at the same time. I am so shocked at how fast it all went down. I'm so sorry if you didn't have the most pleasant uh, shopping experience when this all went down. We did not think we we're gonna sell out this fast. We did decide now though that we are gonna have another restock but we don't know the date yet. It's gonna be a bit further on in springtime because it does take time to make more units. The factory does actually have to produce these so we're gonna have restock and I will let you know about that and we're gonna have way more units. Even though we did have quite an okay restock and we did have a lot of units in our first restock. Um, this is, we didn't think that the demand was gonna be this high. I mean, listen, we're thrilled <laughs> because it's an amazing palette and you seem to be uh, agreeing with that, but we're gonna have a bigger restock coming up. So I'll give you more info about that as soon as we know, but we were as surprised as you were. Let me just tell you that. So I will link a couple of things in the pinned comment down below that I am using on my face today in case you're interested. Those links uh, might be affiliated and when my links are affiliated, there is a little star behind them, meaning that I do earn a small commission if you shop through my links. I will also put the info about all the things that I'm talking about in this episode in the description box. Always check the description box. I do put quite a lot of work into my description boxes. They're usually packed full with information. I also wanted to quickly address something before... Why do I have a cat hair here? Before we get into this week's episode, let's be honest, there are not that many releases this week. There aren't that many releases. I, and I've talked about this before, I really want to regain my time with my husband, my time with like in this home, my time, my free time. I want to take some of it back and I'm kind of toying with the idea of changing this up a little bit. Would you be super mad with me if we changed the new makeup releases from a Sunday to a Friday? It would really really help me because I'm trying to not work on weekends or this is another one. Would it be okay for you if I filmed this one day earlier? Because right now I'm filming it on Fridays and I have to like stress edit it and get it up for the weekend. And sometimes I'm editing and uploading on Saturdays and Sundays. I'm trying to not work on the weekend. Like I'm trying to get some of my my actual free time back. Because I, I haven't been spending enough time with my pets and my husband and just, you know, being alive, not working. I could be filming on Thursdays. The thing then is that I might miss some new releases, so it might not be not feel as fresh as it might feel now. Or I can film them on Thursdays and edit and upload them on Fridays. And if you still want to watch them on Sundays, of course you can just save them until Sunday. Like, let me know what you think. I'm just toying with the idea because this is the only part now that is still stressing me a little bit. So I just wanted to get some feedback. If you think it's the worst idea ever, that's totally fine as well. You can put it down below. It is just, it's not like ideal for my living situation right now because before when I only could film in the weekends, I used to work all week and then I came back and I uh, used my entire weekend to film and edit. But now I'm trying to kind of, you know, have the weekends to spend with my husband. So let me know your thoughts down below. I'm not going to talk about this anymore. Let's jump in and talk about the new releases. Can we talk about, like, let me scoochy scoochy. Can we talk about the Too Faced Lady Balls? Do we want to? Let's talk about the Too Faced upcoming lipstick release that they for some 
absolutely mystifying reason have chosen to name lady balls. I don't know what it is about white men thinking that they can tell women how to empower us. I don't want to be empowered by a white man, okay? Sit down, shut up, okay? I don't... Here's the thing. Empowering women is amazing. There is few things that I am as passionate about as empowering women and making women equal to men. Not only making women equal to men, but also making attributes that are labeled as feminine as important and as valued as attributes that are labeled as masculine. Because the biggest problem is that women get recognition and women get empowered by men when they are acting like men. And on the opposite, men get taken down and get bullied and get harassed when they have feminine attributes or when they are expressing uh, emotions or things that are normatively like associated with the female gender. And I hate that. So the thought of empowering women by calling it lady balls is repulsive. It is the most anti-feminism thing I've ever seen in my life. It is not Jared. I don't know who needs to tell you this, but it's gonna be me. You don't get to decide how to empower me. Just... <laughs> this is the thought of women being empowered and being stronger by growing lady balls is appalling. First of all, balls are too... they're, they're, they're a joke. Like, Punch a man in the balls and he's out for hours. Like, why would, why would you want that? That makes no sense. There's nothing empowering about that. I just wish that we instead would empower women and empower men and empower everyone, non-binary, gender neutral and gender fluid like people by saying that every attribute what is considered masculine and what is considered feminine are equally worth and we don't need a lipstick called lady balls to make women feel empowered because i don't feel empowered by that i don't want to have lady balls i want to be seen as an equal by who i am not by trying to act like a normative man okay thanks for coming to my ted talk i'm gonna get off my soapbox now I'm not sure about this smoothie. I love kiwi. This is kiwi, spinach, apple. Love me. But then this vinegar, I'm gonna be honest, that's all I taste. It's just a chunky vinegar and I'm not sure that that is the, the vibe I was going for. Let's also talk about this train wreck. When I saw this, I was like, this again? Really? Because it seems like Morphe is coming out with even more of these nine pan palettes. And they're coming out with some new colors and they're also re-releasing some of the <sighs> questionable releases from last year in new packaging. One of them is the Color Me Cool and the khaki one. Who remembers my review of those? I firmly remember in my yearly review comparing the quality to cat litter. Do not buy these. <laughs> Listen, maybe they're not that horrible, uh, but the Color Me Cool is absolute trash. Like, absolute trash. Just rubbing a piece of color plastic on your eyes is probably going to be prettier than that palette. I did not like that palette at all, and if you're looking for something cheap and colorful, this shouldn't be it. I will link them down below. Though. They're $12 each, but I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. If you want to spend $12 on a drugstore palette that is of a new color scheme, just try Colourpop. Because even though Colourpop isn't the best formula in the world, it is leaps... Uh, oceans. <laughs> oceans. Light years better than the quality that I tried in the two Nine Pan palettes that I tried for Morphe. Those were not good. I got a lot of tags in this new Viseart palette. It is called Paris Love Letter. It's another one of those Autendu palettes. I do have the Violette Autendu palette and it is a beautiful quality. This is slightly bigger than their mini palette, so this is a slightly bigger size. Uh, this is available now. It's $44. 
This is too brown to be my color scheme. A lot of people said that they thought that this reminded them of the Sydney Grace and Mel Thompson palette. And I will say, I think that that is the, that light grassy green is, is like that pop is making people think of it. Because if I really look at the other colors, I don't think any of the other colors are similar to uh, the Mel Thompson and Sydney Grace palette. I think that palette is a lot more interesting than this is. And uh, Sydney Grace, we didn't actually talk about the package that uh, still hasn't arrived to me. And they actually reshipped my package because something is up. So I'm really, I'm still having high hopes that I'm going to be receiving the palette. I cannot wait to try it because it looks so, 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 so pretty. But I'm not going to be picking this up because... Like I said, I think this Sydney Grace and Mel Thompson palette looks way more interesting than this. I think it's approximately the same price point as well. And I think that that one has more colorful poppy shades than this one. This is just slightly too brown. I will say I have really been enjoying the Visyard formula. Uh, I really do. I have actually tried quite a lot of palettes. And if this was a better color story, for my preference, I probably would have tried it. But it's just, it's not what I'm looking for. The three pops are just not really what I'm looking for in a palette and also I know you have heard me say this quite a lot of times but I'm trying uh, to buy less eyeshadows because I want to review less eyeshadows because I have a couple of palettes that I want to try before I add new ones to my collection I don't think I bought any eyesh- have I bought any eyeshadow? I don't- am I waiting for something? I feel like I haven't bought anything I might be wrong but I feel like I haven't bought them don't hold me. Don't hold me to that, but I don't think I'm waiting for any eyeshadow palette, if I'm going to be totally honest. Here, though, is an eyeshadow palette. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm... You don't have to tell me. I already know. I'm already blaming myself. Listen. <laughs> but this is an eyeshadow palette that I'm very much looking forward to. This is the Glaminatrix palette. Uh, this is their new one. It doesn't say the name here. I don't know why, because it does have a name. I will put the name down in the description box. I don't remember it on the top of my head, but this is the palette that is inspired by Australia. Glaminatrix is an Australian-based indie brand, so this is going to ship out of Australia. Glaminatrix, I have received PR from Glaminatrix before, and she did reach out to me and tell me that she was sending this to me in PR, and if she hadn't, I probably would have tried to pick it up anyways because it looks really pretty. A couple of deep ones, a couple of shimmery ones. It looks really, really, really pretty. I, yeah, I, I really like this. I do really like this. I think it looks super pretty. I don't exactly know the price or the release date yet. If I have the info, I will put it down in the description box because I think we are getting closer to a release date of this one. So I will put some more info in the description box because I do think that there are more info. Oh, here's something that I actually do have. Should I bring this out? Why do I feel like something is stuck in me? Oh, there's... Ugh. This is something that I actually have. I will try and pop up uh, the video that I did trying this one. Because this is the Benefit new mascara. It's called The Real Magnet Extreme Lengthening Mascara. It is available now. I do get PR from Benefit. So I have actually had this for a couple of days. But it was under embargo. It is a mascara that has magnetic minerals within the, the like mascara formula. And inside the tube of the mascara, there is a magnet. So when you are using the wand, the magnet will draw the minerals uh, so that you build your lashes uh, longer. I will say, I hope you can see that in the video here as well, that the result was really good. Like, my lashes looked really nice and it did stay on uh, for as long as I had it on. I had it on for like eight hours. So for me, this did work really good. Um, I will try it, of course, a bit more and see like what I think of it. Is, is it a gimmick? I don't know. I don't know. But it did look pretty good on my lashes. I will definitely keep using it. And if something comes up, I will uh, report back on this mascara in my monthly reviews, of course. But I liked it. It stayed on. I didn't have any smudging or any like fallout little particles. And my lashes looked both voluminized and defined and longer. So... It is what it is. Uh, I hope you saw the little video. Clip it here. It's just recently uh, announced and I will link it down below. I know that people are sometimes like super annoyed with Benefit when they're releasing mascaras and like why don't they release an eyeshadow palette? But I've heard that Benefit is one of the few brands that are actually like making bank on Sephora. <laughs> so whatever they're doing, I mean, they're obviously making good choices. A lot of the products that Benefit are releasing are like actually solid, good quality products. So 
I mean, I must be doing something right. This is something that I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this. You're gonna have to let me know what you think. This is Path McGrath. She dropped a little Valentine's like duo for Val Valentine's duo for Valentine's. Wow, Captain Obvious in the building. But this is a gloss duo. It is Flesh Six and Flesh Fantasy. So these are, from my understanding, existing uh, shades of her lip gloss, and she just released them a little what I think look pretty cheap lip gloss packaging and I don't like a lip gloss one that is that short I think they were pretty affordable at like $25 for two minis I mean that is that is an affordable lip lip gloss duo this isn't something for me and from it feels a bit off brand or do you like it do you think it's cute do you like when luxury brands release like little cute things like this I if this little uh, pouch of the typical Path McGrath pouch with the sequins and stuff, if that hadn't been on the side of this like shot, like this makeup news on Instagram, I would have never guessed Path McGrath. I would have guessed Too Faced or Tarte. And I think that says a lot about what I'm expecting from Path McGrath versus Tarte and when it comes to packaging. But let me know what you think. Let me know if you bought it. I think it was a really good price though. I just I think I was a little bit surprised at that release. Oh, Too Faced has another release. This this is what I hate with Too Faced. And I've said this is going to be probably the third time I mentioned this. And I know they're called Too Faced. Ha 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 pun. So I, I mean, it makes sense. But I really hate that they are like half of the line is overly sexual, kind of explicit content, questionable all together and then half of it is like teddy bears rainbows and just giggles and hugs i don't like that mix like what is your customer what what is your customer because whatever customer is coming up to your gondola they're gonna be like lady balls and teddy bear like and i understand that this is a play on they used to have those teddy bear brushes because the brushes were so soft it was like a teddy bear was stroking your cheek well like i get it i get it. it's a play on that and i know a lot of people will love this packaging i just and i understand again their name is Too Faced. i just don't like lady balls teddy bear you remember that glitter cum face mask they had which was actually supposed I don't want to talk about it. And then the rainbow palettes. It's like better than sex. And then there's something else, cutesy, cutesy rainbows and unicorns. I'm like, w w what is your shtick? Like, what are we trying to prove here? Other than you are pretty, like, it's a disturbing, <laughs> disturbing image of a brand. This palette is, this would have been so cute, 2003. That's my verdict on that. Okay, let's move on. KVD Vegan Beauty is coming out with some lip glosses. And I will say, I like the colors of these lip glosses. I think they are nice. I like, really like the colors of the lip glosses. I think that they look really, really nice. Uh, I think they are semi-opaque, meaning that they have a little bit more of color. More of color? Is that proper? That doesn't seem like proper grammar. But I actually really like the colors. It's available for 19 US dollars each. It's not one of the things that I would be like ordering, but if I ever get to go in the store again and see these, um, I'm not ruling out that I might pick it up because I, I don't hate it. While we're talking about Sephora, how amazing is it that Danessa Myricks is coming into Sephora? I'm so happy for Danessa. That is so great. Of course, not Sephora in Sweden, but still, she's getting the recognition that she deserves. She is an amazing, amazing makeup artist and her brand has really been getting a lot more hype. So I am so excited for her. I've been following her Instagram for so long. I'm so excited for her and for her brand and for the opportunities that this means. And I cannot wait to see what else the brand has in store. I I am so intrigued to be trying even more things from Danessa Myricks. I really want to make another order from Beautylish. Hmm. Maybe that is in maybe that is in the stars for me in, in the near future. Another thing that's come to Sephora is new blush colors from Tower 28. These are three new shades in their Beach Please Lip Tint and Cheek Balm. I think most people use these as cream blushes. This is After Hours, Rush Hours, and Power Hour. That's Sun Kissed Terracotta. 
Oh, I love a blush. Like, it looks so pretty. I really want to try some of the cream products from Tower 28. Um, they're not available in Sweden. Are you awake? Are you awake? Are you awake? Do you want to go out? Can you wait 10 minutes? He's like... <laughs> So, I would love to try one of their blushes. That, that orange one, Golden Hour, looks so pretty as well. Ooh, mm. yeah, I would love to try one of these, but unfortunately, uh, I haven't been able to get a hold of one yet. But it's still on my, it's still on my wish list. So I will link down below where you'll be able to get it if you are lucky enough to be able to shop from Tower Twenty Eight. This is another new thing. I think this is coming to Sephora as well. This is the Artist Couture uh, Spring Collection, and it's called Ethereal Bloom. This is launching on. Well, it's already available, so I will link it down below. It seems to be a loose highlighter and an eyeshadow palette. It's not a loose highlighter <sighs> diamond lights finisher is that a loose eyeshadow or a loose highlighter I'm not a hundred percent sure the eyeshadow palette looks really cute I do love the mix of corals pinks and like the the, the two mints it is slightly too mid-tone to be 100% my style again I'm trying to buy less eyeshadows because I want to review less eyeshadows right now I just want to try a bit more of the ones that I have before I make up my mind about their review. But I do think it looks really pretty and the packaging is A+. That like, like light peach going to the bright turquoise, one of the prettiest packagings I have seen in a really long time. I think the packaging is beautiful. And if you're interested, again, I will leave it down below because it does look really, really pretty. Here is something that I'm... I'm this could have been so pretty, but... I have I have questions. <laughs> this is a new release from Becca. They're releasing a Sunsetter face palette. Three shimmery cheek shades and then a bronzer. I think the bronzer might have a little sheen as well. But it's only one shade and it's meant to be a bronzer blush and highlighter palette. And it's like one shade in 2021 from a big brand like Becca? At least, like the absolute bare minimum is two light and dark that's the least we can expect and preferably more but like one one with a bronzer in it i i don't really understand don't really understand but yeah it is available i will link it down below i'm just questioning a little bit if this is really the only f shade you're coming out with maybe it is what do i know i don't know listen I don't know. Here is something that I think a lot of people are going to be super interested in, and that is a face powder by Tatcha. This is the Silk Powder Protective Setting Powder. It is a protective talc-free setting powder that blurs pores, shields from pollution and blue light, and provides a translucent, soft, radiant finish. Contains silk extract, silk powder, and anti-pollution technology. And I have a cat hair on my lip. It is coming in the beginning of March. It says March 6th. I will link down below where you'll be able to get it. I think a lot of people are going to be super interested in this. So the, this is a protective setting powder. Not finishing powder, setting powder. So this will set your foundation. I... We still don't have Tasha, I think, in Europe. Or did you find Tasha in Europe yet? Because I haven't. I will say the things I've tried from Tasha have really worked for me. I really do want to try more things from Tasha, but since traveling hasn't really been a thing, I haven't been able to buy any new things from Tasha. But I really do like the things that I've tried, but I am going to be so intrigued to watch some reviews on this, to see what people think about this powder, because I do think it's very interesting to see when skincare brands release those makeup products that are like a hybrid, it makes me very intrigued. Gosh, this is going to be a short episode. Speaking of uh, Beautylish, Good Molecules, which is a brand that is Beautylish exclusive, they have released a new BHA Clarify gel cream. It is a gel to soothe irritated blemish prone skin with the help of this weightless gel cream formulated with salicylic acid and centella asiatica extract to help maintain a clear complexion. Only $10. I do not have acne prone skin. I very very rarely get any kind of breakouts or sits or even clogged pores which of course I'm very lucky to not have the problem. I will say I did do an antibiotics uh, cure, like when someone was a cure, that's not the proper English word. I did eat 
uh, a cycle of antibiotics lately because of uh, the surgery that I did and that did really mess up my skin and I was doing all kinds of like mud masks <laughs> trying to sort it out but now I'm back to to my normal uh, clear skin but I think a lot of people would really like a cream like this if it works a soothing cream for blemish prone skin I f it sounds delicious I did actually just recently like two days ago get the gel eye cream from Good Molecules and I said I wanted to buy that I actually had that on my wish list so I'm very grateful to get it in PR I'm actually I should bring that out of my PR basket and start using it because I am so intrigued to use it it was one thing I wanted to buy I don't have acne prone skin so this isn't something that I'm gonna pick up but I'm gonna be very interested to hear what other people have to say about this because if it's a product that works i feel like it would be such a great thing to buy for only ten dollars i will link it down below where you'll be able to get it here is something um it's not for me but i think some people will be really interested to see it and these are some new products from sugar pill sugar pill is re-releasing their eyeshadow called love plus i feel like this eyeshadow was the most hyped when i started out on youtube which is soon six years ago and it is a matte red eyeshadow that doesn't lean either orange or pink they have reformulated it and i'm guessing it's because at this point like when things get this old pigments get discontinued or they have to change labs or have to change factories and um, so I don't think it's like them reformulating it to be better as much as it is them reformulating it to be able to keep it in, in their in their line but they are releasing I think two new eyeshadows Sideshow and Daybreak and then it's Love Plus re-released it is a good matte red eyeshadow but there are a lot of good matte red eyeshadows nowadays I'm gonna be totally honest with you and then we're releasing three are these liquid Lip, liquid lipsticks love bug and somebody which are glitters i'm not that much for a glittery liquid lipstick but then it's ring pop that seems to be a corally one without glitter and then it is friend zone which is a gloss neither of these things are for me i do actually have love plus in the old formulation and i don't reach for that ever if i'm gonna be honest if i reach for a red eyeshadow it's either gonna be from my palette which is i mean I picked this one, this is my favorite. I also love the red from the Festival palette from Juvia's Place and I really love uh, the red uh, shades, the red matte shades that Melt has. Those are really nice as well. Uh, those are the ones that I reach for but this isn't a bad eyeshadow. I just wouldn't buy this one as a single today in 2021 even if I didn't own it. But that's just personal preference and like how I like to do my makeup. There seems to be some new uh, monochromatic smaller palettes coming from the crayon case. This is just a sneak peek uh, of new upcoming palettes from the crayon case. I feel like the <laughs> I feel like the makeup industry they were like, oh, people like color, and then everyone was doing rainbow palettes. And then uh, some brands started doing more monochromatic mini palettes, and then all brands were like, oh, people love monochromatic mini palettes, and now everyone's doing them. And I feel at this point, if you're coming out with a monochromatic mini palette at this point, it better be super unique or extremely good quality. Otherwise, you are kind of late. Like... Like, it, it's like if you would come out with a unicorn or an, like astrology themed collection at this point. It better be super unique or super high quality, otherwise you are just late, late, late. And I feel like this one, it seems just a bit late. Just from what I'm seeing here, I might be totally wrong and I might totally see this differently once I see like more high quality pictures. But some of them seem to be pretty mid-tone. Um, I feel like now, and this is just uh, fortune teller Angie foreseeing what I think the future is going to be, I think we are moving away from warm neutral palette to rainbow palette to monochromatic palettes to palettes that contain two or three colors as a color story. That is where I think the future is right now. Things that are a bit more versatile, building a color story around at least two colors, that is where I think that we are going. And I also think that neutral neutral palettes are coming back. And I also said that I really think that we can, might see some more green, grungy and like like swampy kind of colors, like more khaki and green themed neutral palettes. I still think that we might be seeing that, but I don't think that a lot of people would be super excited about a monochromatic small palette at this point because we've seen it now for like, what is it, 
two years, more than two years, and it's just not a fresh concept at this point. That is just my personal preference. Though maybe you feel totally different and you're like super intrigued by this, which is of course totally fine. Let's end. Um, let's end this. Like I know it's it's a bit more. I think faster. I'm sorry, I might be wrong. Listen. Who knows? I don't know. But let's end with this one. This is another product in the Dior Backstage family. They're coming out with a face and body powder, no powder. Well, that name is a choice. And it says a perfecting translucent... Wait, 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 wait. Perfecting translucent powder in seven shades? How translucent is it then, if you have to have seven shades? Either way. A translucent... Powder with a blurring effect, matte with a natural radiant finish, long wear, transparent gel base that is infused with... Okay, so the base is transparent? Then is it really a translucent powder? Because they say you can use it as a finishing touch or as a highlighter and bronzer depending on your shade and your natural skin tone. So it's not translucent. <laughs> so what you're telling me is that it's a non-translucent translucent powder. I mean, it comes in seven shades. And I also will say, just looking at the shade selection, three the three lightest shades all look... Like, those models look like they have the same shade. And then there's like... Isn't this like so typical? There's like three fair, and then it's like... Fair, 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 light, slightly darker, beige... Tan, deep. I said, <sighs> at one, I mean, I'm not surprised. Dior just came up with the foundation in two shades. Are we surprised? I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. But don't call it translucent when it's seven shades. And also don't say you have seven shades when like three or four of them are like so similar. And if this truly was a translucent powder, you would have only needed one shade. If this truly was a translucent powder, Neither one of these four first shades would have been needed. <laughs> you could have had just one shade. And then it's a tan and, and it's a deep. I don't... There's a seven shade, of course, that they're not showing here. Maybe there's another dark one. I don't know. But obviously it's not a translucent powder. Let's all, all agree on that and we can just see what the reviews tell us. Because I'm sure that there's going to be ooh, a lot of people reviewing the Dior powder because there's always a lot of buzz around Dior makeup for some reason. I don't know. I don't think I own anything Dior actually. Do I? I don't think I own anything Dior. I don't think I do but some somehow a lot of people seem to be reviewing it so they're, someone's doing a good job over Dior marketing. That's for sure. Let me know if there's any of these releases that you're interested in this week. Is there anything that I'm even remotely interested in? Is there anything that I would pick up? The Glaminatrix palette. I am very much looking forward to that. And I will say the Benefit mascara. So far, a really nice mascara. If you're able to get it on a deal or if they're selling it as a mini, maybe that could be something to try out. I'm happy about the Nissa Myricks coming into Sephora. I'm not like head over heels. I'm gonna be honest. I feel like we're having unexpectedly slow weeks now and I don't know exactly what that is about. If it's like spring releases that are like not have not been announced yet but usually brands have announced their spring releases by now. So I don't know if it's like he who shall not be mentioned. Uh, the panini worldwide that is like messing up everything but I am surprised to see that it's this slow in February, if I'm going to be totally honest. I'm not complaining, it's always nice when we have slow weeks, but I'm not going to lie, I'm also slightly surprised. Anyways, I hope you really enjoyed this episode, I hope you're having an amazing Sunday. Do give me some feedback down in the comments. I will have a video tomorrow, so I hope to see you then. Bye!